The Semitic languages, previously also named Syro-Arabian languages, are a branch of the Afroasiatic language family originating in the Middle East that are spoken by more than 330 million people across much of Western Asia, North Africa and the Horn of Africa, as well as in often large immigrant and expatriate communities in North America, Europe and Australia. The terminology was first used in the 1780s by members of the Goodingen School of History, who derived the name from Shem, one of the three sons of Noah in the Book of Genesis. The most widely spoken Semitic languages today are numbers given are for native speakers only Arabic 300 million, Amharic 22 million, Tigrinya 7 million, Hebrew approximately 5 million native, L1 speakers, Tigra approximately 1.05 million, Aramaic 575,000 to 1 million largely Assyrian fluent speakers and Maltese 483,000 speakers. Semitic languages occur in written form from a very early historical date, with East Semitic Akkadian and Eblate texts written in a script adapted from Sumerian cuneiform appearing from the 30th century BCE and the 25th century BCE in Mesopotamia and the Northern Levant respectively. The only earlier attested languages are Sumerian, Elamite 2800 BCE to 550 BCE both language isolates, Egyptian and unclassified Lulubi from the 30th century BCE. Most scripts used to write Semitic languages are abjads, a type of alphabetic script that omits some or all of the vowels, which is feasible for these languages because the consonants in the Semitic languages are the primary carriers of meaning. Among them are the Ugaritic, Phoenician, Aramaic, Hebrew, Syriac, Arabic, and South Arabian alphabets. The Ge'ez script, used for writing the Semitic languages of Ethiopia and Eritrea, is technically an abugida, a modified abjad in which vowels are notated using diacritic marks added to the consonants at all times, in contrast with other Semitic languages which indicate diacritics based on need or for introductory purposes. Maltese is the only Semitic language written in the Latin script and the only Semitic language to be an official language of the European Union. The Semitic languages are notable for their non-concatenative morphology. That is, word roots are not themselves syllables or words, but instead are isolated sets of consonants, usually three, making a so-called triliteral root. Words are composed out of roots not so much by adding prefixes or suffixes, but rather by filling in the vowels between the root consonants, although prefixes and suffixes are often added as well. For example, in Arabic, the root meaning right has the form ktb. From this root, words are formed by filling in the vowels and sometimes adding additional consonants, e.g. katab, book, kutab, books, katib, writer, kutab, writers, kataba, he wrote, yaktubu, he writes, etc. Topic. Name and identification The similarity of the Hebrew, Arabic and Aramaic languages was accepted by Jewish and Islamic scholars since medieval times. The languages were familiar to Western European scholars due to historical contact with neighboring Near Eastern countries and through biblical studies, and a comparative analysis of Hebrew, Arabic, and Aramaic was published in Latin in 1538 by Guillaume Postel. Almost two centuries later, Hiob Ludolf described the similarities between these three languages and the Ethiopian Semitic languages. However, neither scholar named this grouping as Semitic. The term Semitic was created by members of the Göttingen School of History, and specifically by August Ludwig von Schlosser and Johann Gottfried Eichhorn first coined the name Semitic. In the late 18th century to designate the languages closely related to Arabic, Aramaic, and Hebrew. The choice of name was derived from Shem, one of the three sons of Noah in the genealogical accounts of the biblical book of Genesis, or more precisely from the Koine Greek rendering of the name, Sem Sem. Eichhorn is credited with popularizing the term, particularly via a 1795 article, Semitish Sprechen. Semitic languages in which he justified the terminology against criticism that Hebrew and Canaanite were the same language despite Canaan being Hamitic in the Table of Nations. In the Mosaic Table of Nations, those names which are listed as Semites are purely names of tribes who speak the so-called Oriental languages and live in Southwest Asia. 
As far as we can trace the history of these very languages back in time, they have always been written with syllabograms or with alphabetic script never with hieroglyphs or pictograms, and the legends about the invention of the syllabograms and alphabetic script go back to the Semites. In contrast, all so-called Hamitic peoples originally used hieroglyphs, until they here and there, either through contact with the Semites, or through their settlement among them, became familiar with their syllabograms or alphabetic script, and partly adopted them. Viewed from this aspect too, with respect to the alphabet used, the name, Semitic languages, is completely appropriate. Previously these languages had been commonly known as the Oriental languages, in European literature. In the 19th century, Semitic became the conventional name, however, an alternative name, Syro-Arabian languages, was later introduced by James Cowles Pritchard and used by some writers. Topic: History. Topic: Ancient Semitic speaking peoples. There are several locations proposed as possible sites for prehistoric origins of Semitic speaking peoples: Mesopotamia, the Levant, Mediterranean, the Arabian Peninsula, and North Africa, with the most recent Bayesian studies supporting the view that Semitic originated in the Levant circa 3800 BC, and was later also introduced to the Horn of Africa in approximately 800 BC. Semitic languages were spoken across much of the Middle East and Asia Minor during the Bronze Age and Iron Age, the earliest attested being the East Semitic Akkadian of the Mesopotamian and Southeastern Anatolian polities of Akkad, Assyria and Babylonia, and the also East Semitic Eblate language of the Kingdom of Ebla in the northeastern Levant. The various closely related Northwest Semitic Canaanite languages included Amorite, Edomite, Hebrew, Ammonite, Moabite, Phoenician, Punic, Carthaginian, Samaritan, Ekronite, and Sutian, encompassed what is today Israel, Western, Northwestern, and Southern Syria, Lebanon, Palestinian territories, Jordan, the Sinai Peninsula, northern parts of the Arabian Peninsula, and in the case of Phoenician, coastal regions of Tunisia, Carthage, Libya, and Algeria, as well as possibly Malta also. Ugaritic was spoken in the Kingdom of Ugarit in northwestern Syria. Old South Arabian languages distinct from the later attested Arabic were spoken in the kingdoms of Dilmun, Mela'a, Sheba, Ubar, and Megan, which in modern terms encompassed part of the eastern coast of Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, and Yemen. These languages in the form of Ge'ez later spread to the Horn of Africa circa 8th century BC. Arabic and the Arabs were attested in Assyrian annals as being extant in the northern Arabian Peninsula from the 9th century BC. Aramaic, a northwest Semitic language first attested in the 12th century BC in the Levant gradually replaced the East Semitic and Canaanite languages across much of the Near East, particularly after being adopted as the lingua franca of the vast Neo-Assyrian Empire 911-605 BC by Tiglath-Pileser III during the 8th century BC, and being retained by the succeeding Neo-Babylonian Empire and Achaemenid Empires. Topic. Common Era CE. Syriac, a 5th century BC Assyrian Mesopotamian descendant of Aramaic used in northeastern Syria, Mesopotamia and southeast Anatolia, rose to importance as a literary language of early Christianity in the 3rd to 5th centuries and continued into the early Islamic era. With the advent of the early Muslim conquests of the 7th and 8th centuries, the hitherto largely uninfluential Arabic language slowly replaced many but not all, of the indigenous Semitic languages and cultures of the Near East. Both the Near East and North Africa saw an influx of Muslim Arabs from the Arabian Peninsula, followed later by non-Semitic Muslim Iranian and Turkic peoples. The previously dominant Aramaic dialects gradually began to be sidelined, however descendant dialects of Eastern Aramaic including the Akkadian-influenced Assyrian Neo-Aramaic, Chaldean Neo-Aramaic, Taroyo and Mandaic survive to this day among the Assyrians and Mandaeans of northern Iraq, northwestern Iran, northeastern Syria and southeastern Turkey, with up to a million fluent speakers. Western Aramaic is now only spoken by a few thousand Syriac Christians in western Syria. 
The Arabs spread their central Semitic language to North Africa Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco and northern Sudan and Mauritania where it gradually replaced Egyptian Coptic and many Berber languages although Berber is still largely extant in many areas, and for a time to the Iberian Peninsula modern Spain, Portugal and Gibraltar and Malta. With the patronage of the caliphs and the prestige of its liturgical status, Arabic rapidly became one of the world's main literary languages. Its spread among the masses took much longer, however, as many although not all, of the native populations outside the Arabian Peninsula only gradually abandoned their languages in favor of Arabic. As Bedouin tribes settled in conquered areas, it became the main language of not only Central Arabia, but also Yemen, the Fertile Crescent, and Egypt. Most of the Maghreb followed, particularly in the wake of the Banu Halal's incursion in the 11th century, and Arabic became the native language of many inhabitants of Al-Andalus. After the collapse of the Nubian kingdom of Dongola in the 14th century, Arabic began to spread south of Egypt into modern Sudan. Soon after, the Beni Hassan brought Arabization to Mauritania. A number of modern South Arabian languages distinct from Arabic still survive, such as Sokotri, Mary and Sheri which are mainly spoken in Socotra, Yemen and Oman. Meanwhile, the Semitic languages that had arrived from southern Arabia in the 8th century BC were diversifying in Ethiopia and Eritrea, where, under heavy Cushitic influence, they split into a number of languages, including Amharic and Tigrinya. With the expansion of Ethiopia under the Solomonic dynasty, Amharic, previously a minor local language, spread throughout much of the country, replacing both Semitic such as Gafat and non-Semitic such as Waitu languages, and replacing Ge'ez as the principal literary language though Ge'ez remains the liturgical language for Christians in the region, this spread continues to this day, with Qumran set to disappear in another generation. Topic. Present situation Arabic languages and dialects are currently the native languages of majorities from Mauritania to Oman, and from Iraq to the Sudan. Classical Arabic is the language of the Quran. It is also studied widely in the non-Arabic-speaking Muslim world. The Maltese language is genetically a descendant of the extinct Sikulo Arabic, a variety of Maghrebi Arabic formerly spoken in Sicily. The modern Maltese alphabet is based on the Latin script with the addition of some letters with diacritic marks and digraphs. Maltese is the only Semitic official language within the European Union. Successful as second languages far beyond their numbers of contemporary first language speakers, a few Semitic languages today are the base of the sacred literature of some of the world's major religions, including Islam Arabic, Judaism Hebrew and Aramaic, churches of Syriac Christianity Syriac and Ethiopian Christianity Gies, millions learn these as a second language or an archaic version of their modern tongues. Many Muslims learn to read and recite the Quran and Jews speak and study Biblical Hebrew, the language of the Torah, Midrash, and other Jewish scriptures. Ethnic Assyrian followers of the Assyrian Church of the East, Chaldean Catholic Church, Ancient Church of the East, Assyrian Pentecostal Church, Assyrian Evangelical Church and Assyrian members of the Syriac Orthodox Church both speak Mesopotamian Eastern Aramaic and use it also as a liturgical tongue. The language is also used liturgically by the primarily Arabic-speaking followers of the Maronite, Syriac Catholic Church and some Melkite Christians. Arabic itself is the main liturgical language of Oriental Orthodox Christians in the Middle East, who compose the patriarchates of Antioch, Jerusalem and Alexandria. Mandaic is both spoken and used as a liturgical language by the Mandaeans. Despite the ascendancy of Arabic in the Middle East, other Semitic languages still exist. Biblical Hebrew, long extinct as a colloquial language and in use only in Jewish literary, intellectual, and liturgical activity, was revived in spoken form at the end of the 19th century. Modern Hebrew is the main language of Israel, with Biblical Hebrew remaining as the language of liturgy and religious scholarship of Jews worldwide. Several smaller ethnic groups, in particular the Assyrians, Kurdish Jews, and Gnostic Mandians, continue to speak and write Mesopotamian Aramaic languages, particularly Neo-Aramaic languages descended from Syriac, in those areas roughly corresponding to Kurdistan northern Iraq, northeast Syria, southeastern Turkey and northwestern Iran and the Caucasus. 
Syriac language itself, a descendant of Eastern Aramaic languages Mesopotamian Old Aramaic, is used also liturgically by the Syriac Christians throughout the area. Although the majority of Neo-Aramaic dialects spoken today are descended from Eastern varieties, Western Neo-Aramaic is still spoken in three villages in Syria. In Arab-dominated Yemen and Oman, on the southern rim of the Arabian Peninsula, a few tribes continue to speak modern South Arabian languages such as Mari and Sokotri. These languages differ greatly from both the surrounding Arabic dialects and from the unrelated but previously thought to be related languages of the old South Arabian inscriptions. Historically linked to the peninsular homeland of Old South Arabian, of which only one language, Razihi, remains, Ethiopia and Eritrea contain a substantial number of Semitic languages, the most widely spoken are Amharic in Ethiopia, Tigra in Eritrea, and Tigrinya in both. Amharic is the official language of Ethiopia. Tigrinya is a working language in Eritrea. Tigra is spoken by over one million people in the northern and central Eritrean lowlands and parts of eastern Sudan. A number of Grage languages are spoken by populations in the semi-mountainous region of southwest Ethiopia, while Harari is restricted to the city of Harar. Gies remains the liturgical language for certain groups of Christians in Ethiopia and in Eritrea. Topic. Phonology The phonologies of the attested Semitic languages are presented here from a comparative point of view. See Proto-Semitic language hashtag phonology for details on the phonological reconstruction of Proto-Semitic used in this article. The reconstruction of Proto-Semitic was originally based primarily on Arabic, whose phonology and morphology particularly in classical Arabic is very conservative, and which preserves as contrastive 28 out of the evident 29 consonantal phoneme, with asterisk s, s and asterisk s, merging into Arabic, s, and asterisk s, becoming Arabic. Note, the fricatives asterisk s, asterisk z, asterisk s, asterisk s, asterisk, asterisk t may also be interpreted as affricates, t s, d z, t s, t, t, t theta, as discussed in Proto-Semitic language section fricatives. This comparative approach is natural for the consonants, as sound correspondences among the consonants of the Semitic languages are very straightforward for a family of its time depth. Sound shifts affecting the vowels are more numerous and, at times, less regular. Topic consonants Each proto-Semitic phoneme was reconstructed to explain a certain regular sound correspondence between various Semitic languages. Note that Latin letter values italicized for extinct languages are a question of transcription, the exact pronunciation is not recorded. Most of the attested languages have merged a number of the reconstructed original fricatives, though South Arabian retains all 14 and has added a 15th from asterisk p greater than f. In Aramaic and Hebrew, all non-emphatic stops occurring singly after a vowel were softened to fricatives, leading to an alternation that was often later phomicized as a result of the loss of gemination. In languages exhibiting pharyngealization of emphatics, the original velar emphatic has rather developed to a uvular stop q. Note, the fricatives asterisk s, asterisk z, asterisk s, asterisk s, asterisk, asterisk t may also be interpreted as affricates, t s, d z, t s, t, t, t theta. Notes, proto-Semitic asterisk s was still pronounced as in Biblical Hebrew, but no letter was available in the Phoenician alphabet, so the letter did double duty, representing both and later on, however, merged with s, but the old spelling was largely retained, and the two pronunciations of were distinguished graphically in Tiberian Hebrew as versus s. Biblical Hebrew as of the 3rd century BCE apparently still distinguished the phonemes g and h, chi, based on transcriptions in the Septuagint. As in the case of no letters were available to represent these sounds, and existing letters did double duty, chi, h, and In both of these cases, however, the two sounds represented by the same letter eventually merged, leaving no evidence other than early transcriptions of the former distinctions. 
although early Aramaic pre-7th century BCE had only 22 consonants in its alphabet, it apparently distinguished all of the original 29 proto-Semitic phonemes, including asterisk d, asterisk t, asterisk t, asterisk s, asterisk, asterisk g and asterisk h although by Middle Aramaic times, these had all merged with other sounds. This conclusion is mainly based on the shifting representation of words etymologically containing these sounds. In early Aramaic writing, the first five are merged with z, s, 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 q, respectively, but later with d, t, t, s. Also note that due to Bagadkifat spirantization, which occurred after this merger, OAM, T greater than T and D greater than D in some positions, so that PS asterisk T, T and asterisk D, D may be realized as either of T, T and D, D respectively. The sounds asterisk G and asterisk H were always represented using the pharyngeal letters H, but they are distinguished from the pharyngeals in the demotic script Papyrus Amherst 63, written about 200 BCE. This suggests that these sounds, too, were distinguished in Old Aramaic language, but written using the same letters as they later merged with. The earlier pharyngeals can be distinguished in Akkadian from the zero reflexes of asterisk h, asterisk, by e coloring adjacent asterisk a, e.g. ps asterisk ball um owner, lord, greater than akk. Belu, m. Hebrew and Aramaic underwent Bagadkifat spirantization at a certain point, whereby the stop sounds, b, d, k, p, t, were softened to the corresponding fricatives v, x, f, theta written b, g, d, k, p, t when occurring after a vowel and not geminated. This change probably happened after the original Old Aramaic phonemes, theta, disappeared in the 7th century BCE, and most likely occurred after the loss of Hebrew, chi, c, 200 BCE. It is known to have occurred in Hebrew by the 2nd century CE. After a certain point this alternation became contrastive in word medial and final position though bearing low functional load, but in word initial position they remained allophonic. In modern Hebrew, the distinction has a higher functional load due to the loss of gemination, although only the three fricatives, v chi f, are still preserved the fricative, x, is pronounced, chi, in modern Hebrew. The others are pronounced like the corresponding stops, apparently under the influence of later non-native speakers whose native European tongues lacked the sounds theta as phonemes. In the Northwest Semitic languages, asterisk with became asterisk j at the beginning of a word, e.g. Hebrew yelled boy. There is evidence of a rule of assimilation of j to the following coronal consonant in pre-tonic position, shared by Hebrew, Phoenician, and Aramaic. In Assyrian Neo-Aramaic, h is non-existent. In general cases, the language would lack pharyngeal fricative, as heard in Aeon. However, is retained in educational speech, especially among Assyrian priests. The palatalization of Proto-Semitic Jim per gram, to Arabic, D, Jim, is most probably connected to the pronunciation of Kaf, Q, as a per gram, Gaf, hence in most of the Arabian Peninsula, which is the homeland of the Arabic language, is Jim, D, and is Gaf per gram, except in western and southern Yemen and parts of Oman where is Jim per gram, and is Kaf, Q. Ugaritic orthography indicated the vowel after the glottal stop. The Arabic letter Jim has three main pronunciations in modern standard Arabic. D in North Algeria, Iraq, also in most of the Arabian Peninsula and is the predominant pronunciation of literary Arabic outside the Arab world, occurs in most of the Levant and most North Africa, and is used in northern Egypt and some regions in Yemen and Oman. In addition to other minor allophones, the Arabic letter Kaf has three main pronunciations in spoken varieties. In most of the Arabian Peninsula, northern and eastern Yemen and parts of Oman, southern Iraq, upper Egypt, Sudan, Libya, some parts of the Levant and to lesser extent in some parts mostly rural of Maghreb. Q in most of Tunisia, Algeria and Morocco, southern and western Yemen and parts of Oman, northern Iraq, parts of the Levant especially Druze dialects. In most of the Levant and lower Egypt, as well as some North African towns such as Tlemcen and Fez. In addition to other minor allophones. The following table shows the development of the various fricatives in Hebrew, Aramaic and Arabic through cognate words. Possibly affricated, d, z, t, t, theta, t. Topic. Vowels. 
Proto-Semitic vowels are, in general, harder to deduce due to the non-concatenative morphology of Semitic languages. The history of vowel changes in the languages makes drawing up a complete table of correspondences impossible, so only the most common reflexes can be given. In a stressed open syllable, in a stressed closed syllable before a geminate, in a stressed closed syllable before a consonant cluster, when the proto-Semitic stressed vowel remains stressed, ps asterisk a asterisk a greater than akk e e in the neighborhood of ps asterisk asterisk h and before r i e ps asterisk g asterisk k asterisk k asterisk chi greater than ges g k chi underscore u Topic. Correspondence of sounds with other Afroasiatic languages See table at Proto-Afroasiatic language hashtag consonant correspondences Topic. Grammar The Semitic languages share a number of grammatical features, although variation both between separate languages, and within the languages themselves, has naturally occurred over time. Topic. Word order The reconstructed default word order in Proto-Semitic is verb-subject-object possessed-possessor and noun-adjective this was still the case in Classical Arabic and Biblical Hebrew, e.g. Classical Arabic Ra Muhammadun Faridun. Literally, Sa Muhammad Farid, Muhammad Sa Farid. In the modern Arabic vernaculars, however, as well as sometimes in modern Standard Arabic the modern literary language based on Classical Arabic and modern Hebrew, the Classical VSO order has given way to SVO. Modern Ethiopian Semitic languages follow a different word order, SOV, possessor possessed, an adjective noun, however, the oldest attested Ethiopian Semitic language, Gies, was VSO, possessed possessor, and noun adjective. Akkadian was also predominantly SOV. Topic. Cases in nouns and adjectives The Proto-Semitic three-case system nominative, accusative and genitive with differing vowel endings U, A, I, fully preserved in Quranic Arabic CI Rab, Akkadian and Ugaritic, has disappeared everywhere in the many colloquial forms of Semitic languages. Modern Standard Arabic maintains such case distinctions, although they are typically lost in free speech due to colloquial influence. An accusative ending N is preserved in Ethiopian Semitic. The archaic Somalian dialect of Old Aramaic reflects a case distinction in the plural between nominative U and oblique I compare the same distinction in Classical Arabic. Additionally, Semitic nouns and adjectives had a category of state, the indefinite state being expressed by nunation. Topic. Number in nouns Semitic languages originally had three grammatical numbers, singular, dual, and plural. Classical Arabic still has a mandatory dual i.e. it must be used in all circumstances when referring to two entities, marked on nouns, verbs, adjectives and pronouns. Many contemporary dialects of Arabic still have a dual, as in the name for the nation of Bahrain bar c plus ein, two, although it is marked only on nouns. It also occurs in Hebrew in a few nouns. Sana means one year. Snatayam means two years. And sanam means years. But for those it is obligatory. The curious phenomenon of broken plurals, e.g. in Arabic, sadd, one decameter, versus sudud, dams. Found most profusely in the languages of Arabia and Ethiopia, may be partly of proto-Semitic origin, and partly elaborated from simpler origins. Topic. Verb aspect and tense All Semitic languages show two quite distinct styles of morphology used for conjugating verbs. 
Suffix conjugations take suffixes indicating the person, number and gender of the subject, which bear some resemblance to the pronominal suffixes used to indicate direct objects on verbs, I saw him, and possession on nouns, his dog. So-called prefix conjugations actually takes both prefixes and suffixes, with the prefixes primarily indicating person and sometimes number or gender, while the suffixes which are completely different from those used in the suffix conjugation indicate number and gender whenever the prefix does not mark this. The prefix conjugation is noted for a particular pattern of tyn prefixes where one at prefix is used in the singular to mark the second person and third person feminine, while a y prefix marks the third person masculine, and two identical words are used for second person masculine and third person feminine singular. The prefix conjugation is extremely old, with clear analogues in nearly all the families of Afroasiatic languages i.e. at least 10,000 years old. The table on the right shows examples of the prefix and suffix conjugations in Classical Arabic, which has forms that are close to Proto-Semitic. In Proto-Semitic, as still largely reflected in East Semitic, prefix conjugations are used both for the past and the non-past, with different vocalizations. Cf. Akkadian Nipris. We decided. Preterite, Nipteris. We have decided. Perfect, Niparis. We decide. Non-past or imperfect, versus. Suffix conjugated parsanu. We are, were, will be deciding. Stative. Some of these features, e.g. gemination indicating the non-past, imperfect, are generally attributed to Afroasiatic. According to Hetzron, Proto-Semitic had an additional form, the jussive, which was distinguished from the preterite only by the position of stress. The jussive had final stress while the preterite had non-final retracted stress. The West Semitic languages significantly reshaped the system. The most substantial changes occurred in the Central Semitic languages the ancestors of modern Hebrew, Arabic and Aramaic. Essentially, the old prefix conjugated jussive or preterite became a new non-past or imperfect, while the stative became a new past or perfect, and the old prefix conjugated non-past or imperfect with gemination was discarded. New suffixes were used to mark different moods in the non-past, e.g. classical Arabic u indicative, a subjunctive, versus no suffix jussive. It is not generally agreed whether the systems of the various Semitic languages are better interpreted in terms of tense, i.e. past versus non-past, or aspect, i.e. perfect versus imperfect. A special feature in classical Hebrew is the waw consecutive, prefixing a verb form with the letter waw in order to change its tense or aspect. The South Semitic languages show a system somewhere between the East and Central Semitic languages. Later languages show further developments. In the modern varieties of Arabic, for example, the old mood suffixes were dropped, and new mood prefixes developed e.g. by for indicative versus no prefix for subjunctive in many varieties. In the extreme case of Neo-Aramaic, the verb conjugations have been entirely reworked under Iranian influence. Topic. Morphology, triliteral roots All Semitic languages exhibit a unique pattern of stems called Semitic roots consisting typically of triliteral, or three consonant consonantal roots two and four consonant roots also exist, from which nouns, adjectives, and verbs are formed in various ways e.g., by inserting vowels, doubling consonants, lengthening vowels or by adding prefixes, suffixes, or infixes. For instance, the root ktb, dealing with writing, generally yields in Arabic kataba or he wrote, masculine katabat or she wrote, feminine katabtu or I wrote, f and m kudiba or it was written, masculine kudabat or it was written, feminine katabu or they wrote, masculine Katabna or they wrote, feminine. Katabna or we wrote, f and m. Yaktub u or he writes, masculine. Taktub u or she writes, feminine. Naktub u or we write, f and m. Aktub u or I write, f and m. Yuktab u or being written, masculine. Tuktab u or being written, 
Feminine Yaktubin a or they write masculine Yaktubna or they write feminine Taktubna or you write feminine Yaktubin I or they both write masculine for two males Taktubin I or they both write feminine for two females Kataba or he exchanged letters with SB U Katib U or he exchanges with SB Yatakatabin a or they write to each other masculine Iktataba or he is registered intransitive or he contributed a money quantity to STH Ditransitive the first T is part of a particular verbal transfix, not part of the root. Istaktaba or to cause to write sth. Katab or book. The hyphen shows end of stem before various case endings. Kutab or books. Plural. Kutayab or booklet. Diminutive. Kitabot or writing. Katib or writer. Masculine. Katibot or writer, feminine. Katibun a or writers, masculine. Katibot or writers, feminine. Kutab or writers, broken plural. Katabot or clerks, broken plural. Maktab or desk or office. Makatab or desks or offices. Maktabot or library or bookshop. Maktub or written participle or postal letter noun. Katibot or squadron or document. Kataib or squadrons or documents. Iktatab or registration or contribution of funds. Muktatab or subscription. Istik tab or causing to write, and the same root in Hebrew. A line under K and B mean a fricative, X for K and V for B. Katab T. I wrote. Katab ta. U. M. wrote. Katapt. U. F. wrote. Katabna. We wrote. Katbu. They wrote. Katab. He wrote. Katba, she wrote. Katab, reporter. M. Katabet, reporter. F. Kataba, article. Plural Katabot. Miktab, postal letter. Plural Miktabim. Miktaba, writing desk. Plural Miktabot. Katobet, address. Plural Katobot. Katab, handwriting. Katub, written. F. Ketuba. Hiktub, he dictated. F. Hikshiba. Hitkatub, he corresponded. F. Hitkatba. Niktab, it was written. M. Niktba, it was written. F. Katib, spelling. M. Taktab, prescript. M. Makutab, addressee. Mekutabet F. Ketuba. Ketuba a Jewish marriage contract. F in Tigrinya and Amharic, this root survives only in the noun katab, meaning amulet, and the verb to vaccinate. Ethiopic derived languages use different roots for things that have to do with writing and in some cases counting primitive root, sf and trilateral root stems, msf, shf, and sfr are used. This root also exists in other Semitic languages like Hebrew, sep er, book. Sapur, scribe, mizpar, number, and sipur, story. This root also exists in Arabic and is used to form words with a close meaning to writing, such as sahafa, journalism, and sahifa, newspaper, or parchment. Verbs in other non-Semitic Afroasiatic languages show similar radical patterns, but more usually with biconsonantal roots, e.g. Kabyle afeg means fly, while afug means flight, and ufeg means he flew. Compare with Hebrew, where hapleg means set sail, 
Hap Laga means a sailing trip, and Hip Lig means he sailed, while the unrelated up, tup, and ap pertain to flight. Topic. Independent personal pronouns Topic. Cardinal numerals These are the basic numeral stems without feminine suffixes. Note that in most older Semitic languages, the forms of the numerals from 3 to 10 exhibit gender polarity also called chiastic concord. Or reverse agreement, i.e. if the counted noun is masculine, the numeral would be feminine and vice versa. Topic. Typology Some early Semitic languages are speculated to have had weak ergative features. Topic. Common vocabulary Due to the Semitic language's common origin, they share some words and roots. Others differ. For example, terms given in brackets are not derived from the respective Proto-Semitic roots, though they may also derive from Proto-Semitic as does e.g. Arabic dar, cf. Biblical Hebrew dor, dwelling. Sometimes, certain roots differ in meaning from one Semitic language to another. For example, the root byd in Arabic has the meaning of white as well as egg, whereas in Hebrew it only means egg. The root lbn means milk in Arabic, but the color white in Hebrew. The root lhm means meat in Arabic, but bread in Hebrew and kale in Ethiopian Semitic. The original meaning was most probably food. The word medina root mdn has the meaning of metropolis in Amharic city in Arabic and ancient Hebrew, and state in modern Hebrew. Of course, there is sometimes no relation between the roots. For example, knowledge is represented in Hebrew by the root yd, but in Arabic by the roots rf and lm and in Ethiosemitic by the roots wq and flt. For more comparative vocabulary lists, see Wiktionary Appendices. List of Proto-Semitic Stems Swadesh lists for Afro-Asiatic languages. Topic. Classification There are six fairly uncontroversial nodes within the Semitic languages, East Semitic, Northwest Semitic, North Arabian, Old South Arabian also known as Sahadic, Modern South Arabian, and Ethiopian Semitic. These are generally grouped further, but there is ongoing debate as to which belong together. The classification based on shared innovations given below, established by Robert Hetzron in 1976 and with later emendations by John Wenergaard and Rogers as summarized in Hetzron 1997, is the most widely accepted today. In particular, several Semiticists still argue for the traditional partially nonlinguistic view of Arabic as part of South Semitic, and a few e.g. Alexander Militarov or the German-Egyptian professor Arafa Hussein Mustafa see the South Arabian languages as a third branch of Semitic alongside East and West Semitic, rather than as a subgroup of South Semitic. However, a new classification groups Old South Arabian as Central Semitic instead. Roger Blench notes that the Grage languages are highly divergent and wonders whether they might not be a primary branch, reflecting an origin of Afroasiatic in or near Ethiopia. At a lower level, there is still no general agreement on where to draw the line between languages and dialects. An issue particularly relevant in Arabic, Aramaic, and Grage, and the strong mutual influences between Arabic dialects render a genetic subclassification of them particularly difficult. A computational phylogenetic analysis by Kitchen, et al., 2009, considers the Semitic languages to have originated in the Levant about 5,750 years ago during the Early Bronze Age, with early Ethiosemitic originating from southern Arabia approximately 2,800 years ago. The Himyaritic and Sudian languages appear to have been Semitic, but are unclassified due to insufficient data. East Semitic, West Semitic, Central Semitic Northwest Semitic 
Arabic South Semitic Western, Ethiopian Semitic and Old South Arabian Eastern, Modern South Arabian Topic. Semitic speaking peoples The following is a list of some modern and ancient Semitic speaking peoples and nations. Topic. Central Semitic Ammonite speakers of Ammon, Amorites 20th century BC, Arabs, Ancient North Arabian speaking Bedouin. Arameans 16th to 8th centuries BC, Akalamas, Alamu, 14th century BC. Canaanite speaking nations of the early Iron Age. Chaldee appeared in southern Mesopotamia c. 1000 BC and eventually disappeared into the general Babylonian population. Edomites. Hebrews Israelites founded the nation of Israel which later split into the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. The remnants of these people became the Jews and the Samaritans. Maltese Mandaeans Moab Nabataeans Phoenicia, founded Mediterranean colonies including Tyre, Sidon and ancient Carthage. The remnants of these people became the modern inhabitants of Lebanon. Ugarit, 14th to 12th centuries BC Nasrani Syrian Christian Topic. East Semitic Akkadian Empire, ancient Semitic speakers moved into Mesopotamia in the 4th millennium BC and settled among the local peoples of Sumer. The remnants of these people became the modern Assyrian people also known as Chaldo Assyrians of Iraq, Iran, southeastern Turkey and northeast Syria. Babylonian Empire Assyrian Empire Ebla 23rd century BC Topic. South Semitic Kingdom of Aksum 4th century BC to 7th century AD Amhara people Argoba people Dahalic people Grage people Harari people Mary people Old South Arabian speaking peoples Sabaeans of Yemen 9th to 1st centuries BC Silte people Tigrayan people Tigra people Zay people Topic Unknown Sudians 14th century BC Thamud 2nd to 5th centuries AD Topic. See also Proto-Semitic language Middle Bronze Age alphabets Notes <laughs>